I don't know if I've ever introduced an Age of Empires 2 game that could have blown you away with the trees quite as much as this one. Look at these trees. These are apparently birch trees. They're very bright. Welcome. We've got a Loi the Legend cast. And don't worry, I'm not a clickbaiter. But we've got Blue playing as clickbait, playing as the Sicilians. Wait, Blue is clickbait, playing as the Sicilians. There we go. And then in the red, we've got Corentin playing as the Mongols. The map is Mega Random. And as you can see, Mega Random's given us some gigantic birch trees. And a map gen that I've actually seen before. So Mega Random has like maybe, I don't know, 300, 320, 330 maps. And there are many different variations of similar maps. And this one's tricky because there's no stone. So there's zero stone in the middle. And when I think Sicilians, especially at lower elo, I think uh, castle drops because they drop castles really fast, right? Can't do that. And then when I think Mongols, I think Mangadai. Can't do that. Also, this villager here, this birch. Oh, sorry. I was looking at the tree. Uh, th this this woman, this lady, very kind lady at that, sees where Red's TC is set up. Now, will these players at 730 ELO know that the uh, there's no stone on the map? They might figure it out over time, but currently they might still be thinking in their plans, I want some stone. So, again, clickbait in the blue playing as the Sicilians, a civilization that is good in the late game. Um, their main economic bonus is the fact that their farms have a lot more food on them, which only really pays off, you know, if you get to a point where typically the farms would recede. Mongols, on the other hand, they have a scouting bonus, and then they have a hunt bonus. I think that's just a, sh a sheep or a pig being eaten. I cannot tell because these trees are so large. But anyways, if you are taking hunts in any way, shape, or form, like here, or here is the Mongols, you've got an advantage already. Um, both players forgot to make a house. Both players, probably not the biggest fans of Nomad, but Mega Random does occasionally generate as a Nomad start. And then there also are no scouts here. So if they were going Mega Random, they are probably hoping to have a TC at the start, and a scout at least, and stone. So Age of Empires kind of throwing these guys for a loop here. And we'll see how good these are. These two are adapting. There's also only two relics on this map. So it's like a bit of an arena, per se. I, I don't know if there's another way to describe this. But obviously no stone walls here. All right, so trying to think through what the players should maybe be considering. I think the biggest thing right now is the fact that blue knows where red is. Like, that's a huge, huge deal. Red will have no clue, and it's very hard to find your opponent without a scout, right? So I could see some aggressive strategy being possible for Mr. or Mrs. Clickbait here. Um, now, I played this before. I always like to share my experiences with you guys. I played this two times, okay? The first time, I tried to go all-in scouts against a player that was in a corner, and he kind of walled like this. And then he was in Castle Age on Knights, and that did not go so well for me. Um, and then after that, oh god, we have the King of the Desert logo up here. These guys are not playing King of the Desert. Sorry. Um, after that, I had another game where my opponent kind of set up his TC in the middle. He was like, let's say here. <laughs> and, uh, or is even more central than that. And I went for archers. Just double range archers. <laughs> With Saracens, and it was kind of an interesting one. Just fully surrounded the guy. So, uh, I think aggression can work. And it should work at this elo to kind of box players out of resources. But if you are in a position where you can kind of wall yourself into the corner, you could maybe survive from the aggression. Basically, what I'm trying to say is it depends. There's red. Red's going to make an outpost here. Or not an outpost. What is wrong with me today? I've gotten so many words wrong. I'm so sorry. Uh, that is not an outpost, though it will actually give you some vision. So maybe you can consider it one. The red's going to make a mill. And that's a good drop-off point there for the hunt that is nearby the mill. Whoa, early barracks here for clickbait. Okay. No, I, I'm not sleepy at all. I actually have more energy than I normally do at this time of day. Even though it's only 1.30, I'm just... I'm very energetic, but sometimes I'm too energetic and my brain doesn't really match the other levels within my, my body, you know? 
Like my brain's moving too slow, or maybe it's moving too fast for my mouth to be able to speak. Will Blue consider a militia, maybe, to scout? I mean, you see a lot of things here. I don't actually think you need to do that. Because you can see the boar, and you can see the hunt here. You could see the hunt here as well. There's really no reason to be doing that. Also, I'm pretty sure this lady's been trapped for a really long time. So I think Capture Age has her classified as moving right now, right? Trying to see. Oh no, she's back to work now. I was wondering why the stats changed. Okay. I just noticed that she was trapped there for a while. 15 villagers for the Mongol player. Has done a much better job keeping villagers created. Blue is going to drop a militia for scouting. Already knows where red is. So you know where the enemy is. And then you know where a critical amount of resources are. And Blue says, I want to have more resources, please. Now, a thing about Nomad starts that a lot of players aren't used to is you actually... You don't need to have as much on wood at this stage. Um, well, actually, you would need to do so if you're going to farm like this. So I was just going to say, just spend your wood. And while Blue is actually going to make more militia after this and just needs to get a couple houses for population space. So another thing about Nomad Starts is it is incredibly difficult to damage your opponent with, like, militia. Because typically their eco is right underneath their TC. But in this case, Red has actually farmed away from the TC, so that is actually not the case. It's a different world here at low elo, right? And so Blue says, I know where my opponent is. My opponent's in the dark and doesn't know where I am. We're going to be freaking aggressive here. Let's go. I assume Blue remembers that. Blue won't be able to see the farms in the Fog of War, by the way. That's a spectator thing. I wish they'd fix that, but it's been part of casting for so long that I, I don't think it's going to be something that's ever fixed. And here come the Militia. Remember that time I said the Militia shouldn't really do a lot of damage on Nomad Starts? Well, forget what I said, because I don't know what the crap I'm talking about. Here comes Red. These Militia are ready to go. And I said here comes Red when clearly we were looking at Blue, because again, I just can't speak. And let's see what happens here. Clickbait, ready to attack. Is raiding the farms. And what does Red do in reaction to this? Red says, I'm going to make some of these bad boys as well. And one of the militia died to the town center fire. The other one's weak because of the town center fire. But Red is really under pressure right now. And there's a villager, which I assume Red forgot about. And that was the town bell you just heard. So Blue rang the town bell out of frustration and, and fear. And I said, I got the colors wrong again. I got it wrong again. I'm not even, I'm not trying to do this. Okay. We both players have militia, thankfully, so I won't misspeak in this cast. My word, I'm getting frustrated with myself. A great job from Red to thwart the attack and fight back. Sheesh. It is 23 villagers for Red. It is 16 villagers for Blue. And uh, neither player really having the resources to go up to the next stage right now. Would love to see Blue... Uh, add some farms, take these pigs, possibly. One of the best things you can get a habit of doing in Age of Empires 2 is balancing your res. So, like, thinking, what's my next goal? Well, in this case, you probably want the 500 food to go to the next stage, right? So, okay, I have 500 wood right now with 13 on wood. Hmm, maybe I should pull some of these villagers and build farms. That's kind of the goal. Now, an issue for red here is the fact that red... Now probably isn't comfortable moving out all that much. And Red hasn't been able to find as much because Red didn't scout as much as Blue did. Like, Blue is bringing more pigs home. So the militia have really paid off here. I, I take it back. R very well played here from clickbait. Information is always very valuable. Scouting intel, where the opponent's located. Actually, I think for Quarantine here, Quarantine did find a boar and is scouting the rest of the map. The militia have now split up. So they're probably not thinking about stone right now. I know that's something that it probably won't dawn on them until they really want it, but these guys have scouted a lot with their militia and they have not located any stone. All the militia are split up. This is pretty freaking cool. Look at them. 
Setting waypoints everywhere. Red still ahead with total villager count. But blue has more on food right now. Blue could end up in the feudal age faster. And blue's got the pigs. So I consider some of the resources that red has collected over blue right now, if we were to check. Some of that's kind of wasted right now. Like that excess wood, I'm not really seeing how that helps red. And it would help red a lot more, obviously, if red were to farm with some of those bills. Great job here from Clickbait. You guys know that the main reason I joined this is because of Blue's name. No offense, Blue. I, I wasn't expecting the Sicilian militia scouting. Though it is very unique. I'm glad we, we finally made it to this point. Has Red located Blue yet? Okay, has located Blue's farms and Blue's house. Blue does not have loom. So the militia would really kill villagers quickly there. I think there's some paranoia from Red. Red's like, my opponent attacked me before. I don't normally attack at this time. So this guy's really aggressive. Like, I'm really scared now. When in reality, Blue is probably like, I'm just looking for some sheep. What are you talking about? I'm not being aggressive. Resources are looking really good for Blue. Upon arriving to Feudal Age here in a second. Finally got the colors right. I know you guys are all proud of me. And... Red has not even clicked to Feudal Age yet. Boom! 1,300 wood. That's a lot of wood. Some people out there are like, this is why markets exist. You notice Red's reaction right now? I think this is a, oh crap, my opponent's ahead of me. I might as well try and fight now reaction, right? And it's a good thing. It, it's a good thing. Like, you think, oh, that's bad for me? I should do something that's not a bad way of looking at the game it's better than just sitting at home and twiddling your thumbs and now blue's militia are split up randomly all around the map so blue doesn't actually have anything to defend the farms as these villagers now are out of jobs underneath the tc and blue's gonna click man at arms and blue's gonna make a bunch more because blue can't find the other ones <laughs> it's like you know the the raiders come into town and the leader's like, oh, it's fine. We'll just send the militia that we created earlier. And he's like, but sire, you sent them out to scout as well. And he's like, ah, sorry, guys. I did it due to budget problems. We couldn't afford to have a scout and also to have defense. It's funny. But it looks like Blue has located one of them. He has located the weakest one. These two would be helpful as well. And man, that idle time just changed this game entirely. I don't think Blue was planning on spending all this food on Man-at-Arms. Red actually going for Man-at-Arms as well now. Getting the wood upgrade, getting the farm upgrade. Both players are making infantry, so it makes sense for both players to make archers. Right now, I'm sure Blue is currently thinking, I'm going to be ahead because I have so many units. And Red is probably thinking, I'm going to be ahead because I clicked Man-at-Arms. Didn't know till now that Blue did the same. That was actually a really good fight. And let's see how these guys adapt from here. This is a very unique game. And we have supplies coming in for clickbait. We'll see if clickbait even knows what that does. That does make the food cost cheaper for your infantry units. However, uh, you already created a bunch of them, Blue. And now Red rings the town bell. Oh, gosh. I can't. Of all the things low elo players do, the ringing of the town bell bothers me more than anything. And Red, thinking there was a house wall, realizes there wasn't a house wall there at all. And Blue now runs away. Okay, so those who watch my videos probably understand my opinion on this. I have not only said why I don't like the town bell and why it stresses me out many times, but I have also clarified and said the same thing I said before that, which is those who watch my videos have heard this a million times. So now you're going to have to hear that again as well. But to reiterate my point for the million and first time, if you ring the town bell, it is going to idle a lot of eco that isn't actually in harm's way. It is absolutely more convenient for you. I get that. And everyone's not out here to just play and win all the time. You want to play in a way that suits your soul. But it does not suit mine to watch it. Let's just say that. As we've got eight men at arms, four red. And last blue checked, his opponent ended up having only like four or five. I love the dungeon here, though. The dungeon protects the farming eco. And you can also produce sergeants out of the dungeon, which is 
similar stat wise to the man at arm. It is less HP and is one less attack, but it has more armor. So I think it kind of balances out. At least the town bell makes the villagers go back to work correctly. True, because the go back to work hotkey's broken and has been for over a month. True. I said earlier, the devs did make a statement on it about how they're putting a lot of time and effort into trying to fix a lot of those bugs here in June. So I have been very upset by it. Still am upset that it got to the point where that kind of happened. Uh, I think it should be considered unacceptable, and it is. But they are working on it, and we move forward. Don't even get me started on the bugs that I had trying to cast games today. I have to queue up for ranked and then cancel the queue after restarting my game in order to spectate a game. It's a fun time right now. Big attack here. I think blue is going to be taken back by how much red has. Let's see how this fight goes. Okay, so we've got a bigger army for red. Slightly, right? Eight units versus... Well, eight units. Okay. Blue does have infantry armor and attack. There's still a hole there, which is funny to me. And both players very focused on microing their armies at the moment. Still no archers. Look at that. Blue actually buys more stone. Remember, there's no stone available on this map generation. And we are going to see the sergeants make a dungeon there. That is something the sergeants can do. You don't see this a lot. But I think dungeons stress people out. I don't think people know what to do against them. It's a pretty strong tower-like building. Red should see that. Okay, caught a glimpse of the foundation. And is also making scouts here. So we are seeing full feudal here from Red. Blue isn't really spending any more resources at this point, And Blue just says, well, I think I'm, I've done a good enough job. And this is a really good position to hold, right? Because you can just continue to attack Red's houses and then maybe think about Castle Age. Yeah, dungeons can be effective as towers, but more than anything, I think they just really stress people out because they look 10 times stronger than they really are. And when that happens, players could make mistakes, and here comes Red. Red figures, I have to do something, and the units aren't attacking. I imagine that's because he has them on stand ground. I think he had all of his units on stand ground, and so some of them were just, well, they're standing their grounds, and oh, oh, God, oh, boy. Oh, that was, that was bad. That was really bad. Again, an example of why you take the fight to the opponent sometimes, right? Because Red has probably taken a lot of really good fights this week in Age of Empires 2. But those were fights that Red decided to take when Red was ready. Blue decided when that fight was going to be taken by the aggression. Is making more sergeants now. And says, research nomads, I dare you. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, Nomads is a tech you can get out of a castle, which you're not going to get in this map generation. And it is still pretty useless, unique tech, all things considered, but it is a tech that Mongols have, where they don't lose pop space when they lose their houses, and whoa! Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Market is Red's best friend. I thought Red was going to give up, but Red says, no, actually, I'm going to go to Castle Age. Really good decision from Red, because if you try, you're already at a disadvantage. Things are already going bad for you. If you try and catch up in infantry numbers, that ain't going to happen. Now you have blue selling wood to then buy stone for, I assume, another dungeon once these houses are, taking out, are taken out. Something I'd really like here from red, and you're not going to see it this, this elo, is the town bell! No, that's not what I was going to say. He's trying to lure blue into the TC fire, though, which is pretty tricky. Not really working all that well. But yeah, anyways, what I was going to say before the town bell was wrong was uh, counterattack. Get these scouts over to wherever the opponent's base is and kill villagers. Blue doesn't even have loom. And sometimes the best thing to lure the opponent out of your own base with is to send units to their base. You just keep reacting. This isn't going to get much better for you, or so I think. That is a lot of sergeants. Look at these guys. These are epic. They're building. They're builders. And they're also fighters. Red's unit control is really letting him down here this game. Clicked the dungeon so isn't attacking the units and so now like Blue's units is just going to clear everything Red has. 
and red makes it to castle age could make knights right could make step lancers a lot of different units that could maybe have effect but it clearly seems too stressed out by the situation to really know what to do against this pressure it probably feels like there's no possible way to come back from here red hasn't rung the town bell now rings the town bell it doesn't save the villagers that are in harm's way it actually just garrisons villagers that are actually working freely and well it's going from bad to worse here for red because red is in castle age but it's still just going to make units that you don't really gain any, many advantages from here in the castle age we do have the long sword upgrade for what will be three men at arms or two men at arms and you do have the tower sort of kind of helping but well played here from blue this is a really fun game right like blue found the opponent earlier and has never really let up since and things haven't been perfect for blue at home right but it's been good map control even having to be creative on a map where you can't mine stone and still utilizing the stone buildings is pretty cool to see I, I really want to just admire Blue's farms or something, so I don't have to hear the town bell again, but not trying to be too disrespectful to Red here, who's clearly struggling, right? Like, Red is probably, like, man, I, like, maybe he watches my videos, right? And then maybe he he's like, wow, this game seems so fun to play. And then he plays this game, and he gets dungeon rushed and sergeant rushed, and he's just like, what? I'm going to go back to watching Force Nothing videos, because this is just not... Not a game for me. I just can't do it. Skirmisher Micro is not bad. That's not bad. He's picking off some units here or there. I mean, he still has more villagers than Blue. Maybe there's a chance if Blue loses a lot of army. A lot of the infantry is weak, and the infantry is continually being tasked towards buildings. So it's given Red opportunities. I mean, the Skirms are doing one damage a hit, right? So it's going to take forever. Um... Blue could maybe lose this dungeon too. Just trying to think of possibilities here. But the difference now is the resources. And obviously the efficiency, the idle time, all those things factor in here. Uh, clickbait could make knights from here. Oh, clickbait wants a castle. Clickbait is going to save for a castle. That's an interesting. Or not, actually. We're just going to see an additional dungeon. Surrounding the opponent with the dungeon. Let's go. And I would feel completely humiliated right now if I'm red. You, you've just been completely dominated here, my friend. Now, blue has really shown the importance of a market, especially on maps like this where things are just not as normal as you would expect in terms of what's possible, what's what's out there. Using the market is awesome. And red's doing it now, too. Is red going to try and buy a castle here? No way. No way. If he gets a castle up on the hill, if he can make Manga die. <laughs> oh, he just bought wood by accident. He bought the wrong thing. Okay, he's got like no res. Oh, God, the price is so expensive. Sell all your food, too. Sell all your food. Come on, dude. You can do it. Also, how is this happening? Archers and Skirms are taking on a dungeon. What is happening? Come on, Red. You've gone this far. No! <laughs> He's still had a chance. He's like, ah, I'll, I'll sell 3,000 wood to buy stone at ridiculous prices. But what I absolutely will not do is I will not sell my food. For we are the Mongols, and we take pride in the food that we collected 40% faster than the enemy. We would never sell it. I'd prefer to resign. Well, that's a pity, because maybe there was a world where he had a chance. He, he had plenty of wood. He had enough food for upgrades. Like, I think if he gets a castle up on this hill and starts to make Mangadite, maybe there's a chance. But again, this game kind of started. Oh, wait, his market went down. Oh, true. His market went down. He would have had to build a new one. I missed that. Where was the market? Wait, what? No, his market didn't go down. His market's hiding. Okay, ne never mind. Forget that point. But, um,. Anyways, I thought it was a good game. It was a really short Loey the Legend game, but, you know, clickbait. He gave us some good content. He gave us some good strategy. Now, it seems to me like Clickbait understands the Sicilians. And I've said this before about the dungeon. 
if you don't, or, or not even just the dungeon, just the uh, the dungeon and the sergeant in combination with each other, if you don't play against that Civ much, if you've never played as that Civ, there's a lot of uncertainty there. And uncertainty is an amazing tool to use at Low Elo Legends. Again, the dungeon can be strong. The fact that sergeants can make more of them, that could be really good. In the end, I think you can just go like Scout Archer. I think you can just go for your own man at arms. I think there's things you can do against it. You can even rush these things down with villagers. It's not that much more HP in Feudal. I think it's 1,200 HP on a dungeon, where it's 1,000 HP on a tower, for example. But when you look at this building, and then you look at your tower, and then you look back at the building, you're like, whoa, that thing's four times the size. And it produced military, so it's pretty, pretty awkward to deal with. So, Blue used that, and Blue knew where the opponent was right away, which helped. Red actually collected more resources this game. It's interesting how much of this game revolved around that stone being necessary, right? Red clearly wanted a castle. Red probably picked Mongols because Meg Random has a lot of hunt. It's good with his scouting bonus, and Mongols are just really good. Uh, and then Blue picked Sicilians for different reasons, but they didn't mine any stone. They had to buy it. And thankfully for Lou, he bought enough of it because Red just couldn't afford to get that castle at the end. That was cool, though. You don't see that many, uh, that much aggression in Feudal Age these days, even in Low the Legends. So I think it paid off, though. GG.